Demography is destiny is a line you hear often in politics, and it is a very good yet imperfect guide to predicting future political outcomes. The veteran political reporter Tom Edsel offers a thoughtful look at some current trends in the New York Times. This is striking. Look at the projected growth of millennials and younger generations as a percentage of the electorate over the next dozen years. Then consider this. Millennials, those between 27 and 42 years old, favor Democrats by 14 points in the 2022 midterms. Gen Z voters, those 18 to 26 years old, favor Democrats by a whopping 56 points last year. So demography favors the Democrats, without question. And that advantage will only grow unless Republicans can make significant inroads. But, important but, why hasn't that advantage helped Democrats more already? How did Donald Trump win in 2016, for example? Or why did Republicans win the House last year? Edsel explains it this way. The white backlash to growing, the growing strength of liberal constituencies not only prompted conservative voters to back Republicans by higher margins, they also turned out to vote at exceptionally high rates. Tom Edsel is here to join our conversation. It's great to see you, to see my you, old John. friend. So explain the backlash, and I want to put up one other graphic as you do, because it's striking. The younger voters are growing in size. They're a bigger piece of the voting pie, and they disproportionately favor Democrats. And yet, Republicans are holding their own. Here's one reason why. Look at the evangelical voters. White, no, white non-college degree, Bush versus Trump. Donald Trump gets a way higher percentage, 12 points higher among white without a college degree. Among white evangelicals, George W. Bush gets 75 percent, Donald Trump gets 89 percent. This is the backlash you're talking about. Populations, whether it's blue-collar workers or religious voters, who feel somehow threatened. What's going on, it's two, two steps in a sense. Not only are young voters voting more for Democrats, but as they grow older, they're defying the basic rule of politics that the older you get, the more conservative you become. They're going in the opposite direction for the first time over the last three election cycles. So you see a rise in their democratic margins and a rise in the degree that they turn out. The problem is, this sounds great for Democrats, is that white conservatives, evangelicals, white Catholics, are turning out way above their numbers. They're punching more than they, uh, harder than they should. I think the figures for evangelicals is there's something like 14% of the population now, but they're 22% of the actual turnout. That's a huge difference. But we could show that. We could show that and continue the conversation. White evangelicals, 14% of the population, 22% of the voters in 2020. White Catholics, 12% of the population, 16% of the voters in 2020. It just tells you that you, look at, you, you can look at the pie, mm -hmm. and Democrats, Democratic-leaning voters are a bigger slice of the pie, and yet there's always what I call the push-me-pull-you in demographics, and I mean Dr. Doolittle, not the video game, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, in the sense that, you know, one group starts to pull this way, and another group says, well, I feel threatened, and they pull back. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the question. Is it, Tom, do you feel in looking at the, at the research and the data that it's, for lack of a better way to say it, wokeism? Is it because uh, of the, what a lot of these people see on conservative media about the other coming in, that they're buying into that? Or is it all of it? Well, I think the real fear is that they, they think they're going to get extinguished mm -hmm. by these growing numbers of liberal constituencies. The best way to turn out a vote is to get the person scared. Mm -hmm. The other best way is to get them angry. Uh, and what ha has happened is that leaders on the right have gotten their voters scared and angry. And the effect is that they're turning out in these higher and higher numbers. Their long-term problem is how much juice can you squeeze out of a lemon that's actually shrinking. Mm -hmm. And over time... It's this, this method of countering the liberal trend really runs into real problems as it hits this, it sort of maxes out, and you just can't get another drop out of that lemon. Right, that, that's the great point. If you go back to the original graphic we had, millennials and younger generations, a majority of the electorate by 2028, that, that's the point you're making in the sense that when you see Donald Trump's attack today on birthright citizenship, yeah. when you see the attacks on transgender uh, Americans, when you see, you know, whether it's immigration, whether it's gay rights, it's these issues that you're playing to the base or, blue, or trade, trade and globalism, yeah. globalization. You're playing to blue-collar workers, you're playing to the evangelical voters. And yet, to Tom's point, how many times when that piece, when 62% of the electorate in 2036 is going to be these younger voters. 
that song's not going to work anymore, as Bill Clinton would say, that dog won't hunt. Right, but, but for now, it can hunt, right? I mean, yeah. we saw what happened in 2022 with the House. We obviously saw what happened in 2016, and Donald Trump is trying to make that dog hunt uh, in 2024. He is the master of white grievance politics, the master of white identity politics. He knows what to say. He sort of knows. It's not even code words at this point. It's basically uh, saying that brown people are going to come here and kill you, right? I mean, that was during his, uh, uh, you know, uh, when he announced his uh, candidacy in 2016. Right. I mean, that's essentially what he said. Uh, and so they'll play that over and over again. You see DeSantis doing the same thing, the right. idea, you know, that the woke mob, you know, is out to get you, but he's going to be the, the person to vanquish it. So it works. It, you know, it's worked in American politics quite well. We had, I think, Republicans not want to sort of play this game of white identity politics, but Donald Trump played it, and he played it masterfully. And so part of the challenge for Republicans is can somebody break the mold, if you will. You do have Nikki Haley, you have Tim Scott, you have Vivek Ramaswamy, you have Larry Elder, you do have voters of color, women in the, in the Republican field. Do they try to practice a different kind of politics to bring, to widen the tent, expand the tent, or do they stay in that lane because Trump proved it can work? Well, they have tried at least by emphasizing their own identities, pointing to their own personal diversities to try to bring that um, factor to the Republican Party. But I'm really struck, especially with the, per the growing percentage of younger voters that are favoring Democrats, just how little in terms of policy that Republicans have tried in reaching out to younger voters. I think the closest that you can get is perhaps some Republican elected officials embracing the science of climate change, saying this is something that we have to tackle, maybe not in the way that Democrats are proposing, but it is certainly a threat and we have to propose policies towards it. But you just kind of step back and they're not really appealing to to younger voters in the way, it, with their policy platforms, with their proposals. Where do you watch? Where do you watch? Uh, we go back a long way. Michael Dukakis won West Virginia. Forget about it now, <laughs> right? You know, uh, Wisconsin, a, a state where Trump won, then lost. Uh, where, where do you watch for sort of where's the tipping point in this demographic tug of war? Uh, well, I think Wisconsin is an excellent state, actually, to look at. Pennsylvania is another. There are a lot of uh, northern, uh, midwestern, purple states where these tilts are just coming in. And you see what happens is in the states where they have a higher percentage of college-educated white voters, that's where the tipping point occurs. Right. And these voters are Repo Democrats. Right. And that's where the Republicans really run into big problems. I, I urge everyone to pick up the New York Times. It's a long, in-depth article. It's a, lot, it's a lot deeper than we can do on television. But, Tom, appreciate <laughs> you're here.